Welcome to Travel Talk. I'm Mary Pat Sullivan. I'm joined today by our editorial and thought leaders from throughout the travel industry. We're going to talk about global travel trends for 2023, and I'm really excited to have this conversation with our editorial teams. We haven't really talked too much tech. And like you said, when people were during the pandemic, they were sitting in front of their computers, and I'm sure some really smart people came up with some new technology as well. So what's some of the innovations that have happened while, while we are uh, back in things here? You know, and it's actually interesting that you frame it that way because we put out what we call the Hot 25 Startups for the coming year. We do that in the fall. So we had the Hot 25 Startups for 2023 that just released in November. The majority of those were funded since the, I mean, were founded since the start of the pandemic. So, you know, that, that mantra of, you know, necessity breeds yeah. creativity. Um, I'm not sure if I said that right, but <laughs> yeah, that concept certainly has uh, come to bear. When I think of technology and innovation, the overarching topic that comes to my mind is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're hearing about it everywhere. And of course, the number one that I, must mention is this concept of the generative AI chatbot, which I'm sure if you've been on LinkedIn or Twitter or anything lately, you've seen talk of chat GPT, which is kind of the most popular one, but there are many others. Um, but it's if you haven't messed around with it and, and played with it, I would say do it because it's just fascinating. You know, be careful because the time will be gone before you know it. Um, but it is in effect a very human-like communication tool and really it can do uh, so many things just based on what the prompt is that you give it it can write poetry it can write it can code an entire website it can create a travel itinerary I have a trip coming up and I can say you know create a two-day itinerary in Montreal for me and literally in 10 seconds there it is in front of your eyes. I just heard last week of a cruise line that is using it to create all their marketing content, or at least they're testing it for that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's potential implications for the internal operations of our industry, mm -hmm. as well as for the consumer facing. For years we've been talking AI, and what will it do? Will travel agents go out of business? We've heard that a million times, and they've survived everything, so I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. But yeah. what do you guys think in terms of where it'll be used and how? Well, we have a ton of applications in business travel for this type of um, technology, whether it's the uh, generative, as you pointed out with ChatGPT, or just sort of big data. Yeah. Um, tools and we see a ton of it and I think we're going to see it applied in the cost saving area in 2023 in the procurement of travel which I know sounds incredibly boring but for a company that's looking to maximize its travel dollars those procurement strategies are super super important and we are going to see a more automated um, AI driven I should maybe say machine learning driven um, strategy for understanding what meetings destinations they should be going to, understanding what types of rates in the market are correct for their size program. So we're gonna we're gonna see much more along those lines, and I I'm very excited about a number of technologies in the marketplace right now, and I'm sure you have named some of them on your uh, yeah. on your list, but that that will source meeting destinations based on whatever vectors you give it. And, uh, and we'll find the lowest cost for you. So it's, yeah. it's super interesting and very surprising um, sometimes what comes back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and of course we're also hearing a lot about hotels and airlines using artificial intelligence and of course with machine learning to automate tasks like revenue management, dynamic pricing, um, creating personalized offers as consumers are searching on a website. The, these technologies can really do things at scale in a way that humans simply can't. And then it frees up the humans to do things that require maybe a more thoughtful effort. Uh, and certainly at a time now when everyone is dealing with staffing challenges, okay. this it can be a real game changer for the companies that are using it in, in really savvy ways. Let's go ahead. And I, I think this is a, a really important conversation for agencies as well, um, because the uh, lack or sort of dearth of uh, really high quality agents, so you can sort of let that AI and machine learning kind of yeah. take care of some of the lower level tasks that get repetitive and let those great agents take over when they're needed. And yeah. I, I, our editor in chief had just uh, done a column about using uh, ChatGPT to Correct. try to create an itinerary, a more complicated 
sort of like leisure focused itinerary. It's not, it doesn't replace no, what doesn't. a human can right. do in terms of the interaction and the, the well, the human component, mm -hmm. really, right. frankly. So, yeah. um, so the, the, the takeaway there was that, you know, advisors should not be afraid of the technology. It is not right. a replacement. Um, Find a way but you know, the interesting thing, it only launched November 30th. I was going to say, at right. least not yet. Right. Right. So right. in the first month, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is rapidly evolving. The more people that use it, mm -hmm. it will get better. It mm -hmm. will get smarter. That's that machine learning piece. And I, you know, we're starting to hear a lot about now other companies creating kind of the term I've heard is a wrapper that is used in conjunction with some of these generative AI mm -hmm. chatbots that then make them more applicable to specific tasks. But we are that. seeing, at least on the corporate travel side, agencies that are startup agencies that are saying, yes, I want to be a tech forward agency, mm -hmm. but let me tell you something, with the complexities that are involved in travel today, personal, Human to human interactions are important, yes. and the kind of concierge type services that right. need to be wrapped around the itinerary have to be there. And that's for right. leisure travel, yes. but for corporate travel, for sure, yeah. absolutely, it's not an either or. It's not an either no. or, and no. it's just going to make it a different, hopefully, more personalized experience for everyone rather than just the few who can afford it. Right. That's yeah. I, I do really like that vision of it. Yeah. And, and since it's only since November 30th, we'll see where it goes. Yes, exactly. But some of what you just discussed, I kind of want to take into the meetings in the sports mm. world a little bit because um, when you think about a destination being chosen through an AI mm -hmm. capacity, right. so are they looking at things like metaverse to promote the destinations? And I, this is all new to me, but let's talk about the metaverse and where it fits. Yeah. So I actually, I just talked to um, a technology expert, Nick Borelli, last week. And he thinks it's really 2024 that we're going to see more application. I mean, you know, there's so many tools, the AI tools that, that allow um, virtual reality to more closely mirror reality. And that will help in terms of destination, mm -hmm. you know, experiences. But we're kind of, you know, just... We're just talking about it now. I think it's going to take a little while. It will be in our 2024, 2024. travel talk discussion. Yeah. Jason, what do you yeah. think? Well, we, uh, in addition to covering the world of traditional sports, we cover the world of esports and competitive video gaming from uh, the perspective of in-person events. And I think there we're going to see opportunities, uh, particularly for destination marketing around uh, you can drop in not just hints or advertisements. In some cases, I was at a uh, competitive esports event in Toronto over the summer. They were playing Overwatch. And one of the rounds of this game, they were competing on the streets, the virtual streets of Toronto. And yes, they were kind of shooting each other up. But nonetheless, <laughs> my 12-year-old son and his friends, if they saw that, that's how they're going to get exposed to downtown Toronto. It's not going to be from some other form of marketing or advertising. It's yeah. going to be in the game environment. Wow. And you're going to see that and see opportunities, I think, just from this world of competitive video gaming for the next generation in a lot of ways, and that's how they're going to get exposure. That's where the advertising yeah. goes. Yeah. Right, right. Wow. but I think it's even bigger than that for meetings. I think that meetings will start to incorporate, especially as more meeting planners and more meeting technology experts mm -hmm. um, come on board with agencies mm -hmm. and corporations, mm -hmm. et cetera. They are going to start to create these experiences for their hybrid mm -hmm. Right, meetings right. that are so much more immersive than sort of click here so you can go, you know, watch this Zoom. Right. Which you know, is so important because the exactly. hybrid audience right now is getting lost for the most part. Totally. Yes. Myself because they're included. not really engaged in it's the experience. Not, it's right. not immersive yeah. enough. I mean, if, right? I, if right. I sign up to participate right. remotely, you know, invariably I'm distracted by something else right. and it's running right. and I'm not really listening and, you know, but to engage that audience is a big challenge right now. So I think that that. And I think we have much to learn from the yeah. esports. Uh, Definitely. I think, you'll see that, yeah. I think you'll see cruise lines trying to figure out how to get to that esports Well, we're already seeing it. There are hotels and resorts that are developing esports components of their resorts, mm -hmm. something for the kids to oh do and something yeah. for the parents to do. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. 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 I wrote an article about the wireless craze, mm. <laughs> and I was talking about handheld devices and cellular phones are expected to sell like hotcakes over the next few years. And then in, I also said that you know of these new devices, a a phone slash 
personal, what's PDA? Personal digital assistant? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like a Blackberry. A phone right. slash PDA <laughs> and it said, Blackberry. still, it's too early to tell if these hybrid devices <laughs> will be a success. What's the message here 2001? for us then? 2001? Most of them are reality. So that's so, why you're a tech billionaire. Today. Exactly. <laughs> so would you like me to ask all of you to make predictions now for so what <laughs> Still too early to see if there'll be a success, but right. I think that that so is, you know, you a know, lot of promise. It, uh, you know. I'm really glad to hear you thought it might work. <laughs> Just tell us. So yeah. let's take one more text topic before we wrap, because I think this is important. So, and I, I don't know enough about this. I'm going to throw it out and let you talk, but fintech and payments. I mean, this is a big change in our segments. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? I'm going to let you start, Mitra, because yes. I know that you know a little bit more about the re sort of the retail aspect of it. And I'm more niche with how travel managers are using different types of payments. Yeah. So I, I'll just mention a few things that come to mind when I think about it. It absolutely is big. It's kind of been what everybody's been talking about. There's been a lot of funding to some of these companies. Um, the overarching concept of embedded finance is something that is really taking off. And that's the idea of more and more financial products embedded into travel apps, travel websites. You know, now you, it's not uncommon. You see Apple Pay, you see Google Pay, you might see a cryptocurrency option. So all of that has taken off. Something um, that I'm sure you've heard of, the buy now, pay later mm -hmm. concept has really become popular in the last couple of years. There are risks involved in that. There's questions about you know, unsustainable debt that people may be taking on. An interesting twist on that that we're now hearing more of is save now, buy later. Mm -hmm. So these are, there is a company called Accrue here in the US. There's one in Europe called Monkey and there's a startup in APEC called Sugar. And the idea is that these are platforms that a consumer can use to save potentially toward a specific goal, let's say a trip, and then the platform has partnerships, maybe with a hotel, with a tour operator, and they provide financial incentives if the user then spends that savings with them. Oh. So, you know, it, it yeah. harkens back to the old kind of layaway I was going to say yeah. maybe, yeah. but layaway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think that's something we're going to be hearing more about. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is, you know, biometrics for payments. Certainly QR codes really took off during the pandemic. Uh, personally, I kind of thought QR car codes were dead. Oh, the pandemic saved the QR code. That yes, the pandemic <laughs> saved the QR code. And now it is shifting even more to just completely contactless. Um, you know, as far as using like your um, retina scanning or hand, we heard about a, a store in the Nashville airport where you can grab and go what you want and then you use your palm, mm -hmm. read your palm and you check out. Um, so the whole concept of biometrics, I think may start to be the shift of from QR codes to the biometrics. I don't mean to be a doubter, and I'm going to let you take this on, but mm. I've been hearing crypto as a payment method for a long time, and most of the cruise lines don't take it yet. There's not a lot of engagement on the travel industry side. Are you seeing that? You know, um, the, I feel like the jury's still a little yeah. bit out. Here's what's happened. Certainly when crypto was taking off as far as its value, Nobody wants to use it as a currency then. Everybody wants to hold on to it. You don't want to use it to buy stuff right. if it's, you it's know, doubling more value, value every right, day. Right. right. So yeah, we'll see. But I do, I do see more happening in that space for sure. And just pr providing it as an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I would say on the corporate side, it might be a bit different. Corporate tends to be a little bit more conservative and doesn't want to go out on a limb with uh, with crypto. Now, on what the suppliers want to do, it's kind of their um, that's a little bit off, offset from what they would do with, with a corporate travel environment. Right. I do think there was a really interesting um, acquisition uh, late last year. Uh, Sabre bought a company called Conferma, which was a big um, virtual payment solution. And what you are seeing on the agency side, particularly in corporate, is that they are offering more as you say, embedded uh, financial solutions to their corporate customers. So that, frankly, it's another revenue source for yeah. the agency. They get that little um, cut that comes from the financial transaction and it becomes a stream for them. So I think it's really important for the health of the industry to start to look at those new revenue streams and start to um, take advantage of what is out there in fintech to um, use it to our advantage in the travel industry. And you know the other thing that I would add on the fintech 
topic is that we have to talk about the products that have emerged to provide some assurance mm. and to help with the risk of delays and cancellations, which of course, you know, was the topic of the last couple of years. Um, according to Focusrite's research, U.S. consumers, 62% say that delays and disruptions are a key concern when they're planning their travel and nearly half are open to paying to protect their trips. And so that's where we're seeing the growth. You know, certainly the brand that's gotten a lot of buzz is Hopper in this space. They've got all these, you know, cancel for any reason, price freeze. Um, you can book a, a short-term rental and leave if you get there and it doesn't meet your expectations and they will compensate you or rebook uh, your stay. So we're seeing a real interest in those types of fintech products and it's potentially a whole new revenue source for the companies that offer it. You know, it's it's not just booking that trip, but now there's that extra spend to provide some of this insur assurance. We saw that on the retail side, the for growth sure. of insurance right. as a, mm -hmm. a financial benefit to the travel agency community and as a necessity now. Right? Yeah, talk mm -hmm. about things that probably are not gonna change. Yeah, that, right. that's not going away. Yeah. People are gonna book insurance with these trips from yeah. now on, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think it kind of goes back to something that actually we talked about earlier in terms of this is a stretch, but like when you're booking your um, your tours and activities online, people are traveling now and they are they are they are planning the whole thing out and they don't want to leave anything to chance. Yeah, right. So uh, you know, it's like going to Disney World. You know, when you go to Walt Disney World, you have a plan for every day. You know, the rides. You've got your, you know, you've got a strategy, and that's how people approach travel nowadays. And I think these products help people with peace of mind in terms of their investment. Yeah. I mean, it's not a small ticket to book travel and you want to make sure this and you're going with your, maybe you're going with your extended family now and you've got 10 people to provide for. What are we doing on day two? What are we doing on day three? Let's figure it out. Let's make, and so this all, it's, it's all part of the same thing, right? Travel mm -hmm. advisors are like working to plan the whole thing out. You've got products that will help protect your investment to the extent that you can protect against, you know, disruptions, which, yes. mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you can't always. Mm -hmm. um, and you have this new technology that will, that will facilitate those incremental, you know, restaurant reservations online where we're going to have dinner. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's so, it's so specific. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the tools are making that happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, thank you for joining us. This has been Mary Pat Sullivan. I've been so grateful to have all of our editorial leaders joining us today to have this conversation. Join us again soon.